Hey guys, Steve here. Today we got a new pick of premium for you. We got Frazier on the screen. That's right, Exeter won last time the Tier 5 British Cruiser. You guys voted last video on which premium you wanted to see. Another opportunity this video. Sometimes I'm seeing you guys voting on other videos. We're just voting on just the pick of premium videos. So if you want your vote counted, uh, you can go through the list of premium ships in the game. You can pick any one that uh, you want. Only vote for one. Put it in the comments. Hit enter. That'll get it entered. The caveat is I got to have the ship. Now I have pretty much all the premiums except for Gascon, uh, Roma, although maybe by the time this one's tallied up we might have the Roma. We'll see. And then I don't have most of the tier twos. You guys keep voting for Mikasa a lot of you. Hasn't won yet. But uh, it's going to not really matter if it does win because I don't own it. Anyway, them's the rules. Here we got a game on Domination Mode. North is the map. Now, we, wonky spawns. You never know what you're going to get on this map. We got three guys over here, and one of them is going to bail. Both of them look like they're initially going to bail, which is indicative of the state of play lately. But um, we're going to ignore what they're really doing. <laughs> I'm not going to abandon A. A is a really critical side on this map. It's the most open one. It's usually the most hotly contested. Uh, so regardless of what our team's going to do, we're definitely going to play A. If they leave, of course, we're going to play it quite conservatively and then die. But um, <laughs> hopefully we get some support. Looks like the guys from B are also trending over here as well. This ship has pretty decent concealment. I think it's six, uh, 10 kilometers C detection which if you go up and down the line, that's actually the best, at least on my builds. So you can use the concealment on this quite effectively, get in these positions. Using this big island here on north usually allows you to get way up here anyways. It's just certain cruisers, you're going to want to be closer. Certain cruisers, not so much. German cruisers, British cruisers, you got steep firing torpedo angles, uh, which can be used to protect yourself when guys are rushing you. A ship like a Japanese cruiser where the torpedoes usually fire backwards. You're not going to necessarily want to park in here uh, too aggressively and just sit there because you're not going to have really a way to defend yourself if anyone rushes you. Take a couple shots at the Bayern here, might as well, and then we see we got a plethora of red ships coming over here. So, wonky deployment. Looks like the blue team behind us is coming around. Um, so they took a little bit of a roundabout. Made us a little nervous, but no harm, no fall. Brittany's coming around here, and you can see we're tight, We're trying to slow down here. I just want to get just on this cap to make sure we're putting some pressure on it, and then we want to line up these torps. Now, I don't think I have footage of this in this video, but if you use the widespreads on this Exeter, it's a three torpedo per side, and the widespread looks like a very wide fan. So widespreads normally are not recommended by me at all. I would definitely not use them on this ever. Marblehead decides he's going to get test the waters. I mean, that was designed to be a pretty big kill shot on the Brittany, but he gone because he sailed right into it. So Marblehead opening kill of the game. We get the first blood there. Thinking about making an aggressive play on the Omaha to my right. Unfortunately, the smoke runs out. I don't want to be pushing too far forward here. We do have juicy, hard-hitting 203 caliber guns, which makes us a heavy cruiser, but some players here... Heavy cruiser, they think very strong armor. That's not the case here. This is a cruiser that can get pushed around, so we want to be careful we don't pull too far forward there. Uh, but the Brittany, we're backing up now, and you can see when we start getting some shots in this guy. I mean, the Brittany broadside, it's not the most heavily armored ship. You can bomb on it with certain cruisers, certainly like the Molotov, the Exeter. Uh, there's, you know, Pensacola. Ships of that nature that kind of are pretty punchy. Definitely can present quite a bit of a threat to this guy. But, you know, this is just a good opportunity to see just how punchy these guns are. And this is why we're really specking for the AP. I mean, the HE on this is okay. With my Belfast build, we got a 17% fire chance. Uh, the HE damage. Looks like it's, you know, high in the middle of the pack. So it's not bad HE, but the AP with my... With the uh, Belfast build, it's almost the strongest... Uh, just behind the Pensacola and the Graf B is, of course, miles away. But with this build here, um, with Frazier, it's actually stronger than the Pensacola. Now my Frazier is a little bit higher level than the the uh, Belfast build. So 
that probably accounts for the difference in the AP damage. But regardless, we got far more penetration. I got slot one AP penetration. I got slot three, which is the penetration and uh, damage multiplier for the AP. And then we got Yamamoto's an inspiration here. So on this build, this is balls to the wall AP. And you can see in this game, this is a pretty good um, you know, demonstration of just how effective it is. Trying to back up here, trying to, we're definitely playing this island, <laughs> this game. I don't really know, we don't leave this island's position too much throughout the game. You can see though, when you're getting really tight on this thing, it makes maneuvering kind of difficult. But the Exeter, you know, if you're careful, if you're watching what you're doing, it's a fairly maneuverable ship. Stops fairly slow, like most British cruisers, but other than that, um, maneuverable, maneuverability is pretty tight. Uh, Byron looks like he's pushing around. We're going to attempt to drop the torps there. Now it looked like we were clear of that island, and then uh, we zoom out and resume shooting. So I didn't actually notice this when we were playing, but you can see there the splashes. So, you know, 20 seconds from now when I was playing this game, I'm like, all right, where are the torps? <laughs> Uh, but, you know, they obviously hit the island there. So, a little bit dicey in terms of the torpedo launch. Didn't quite get it off. That's not going to deter us, though. I would like to get some torps off here. So, I'm being a little aggressive here, trying to see if we can sneak them through here without getting blasted. You're going to see when we're shooting this Byron with the AP, even the really strong uh, AP that's heavily buffed here, the Byron's armor is pretty strong. So, it's going to depend where he hit the ship. Sometimes you're going to get shatters. Sometimes you'll get penetrations. Don't want to rush him too aggressively. Um, and frankly, I don't know if he ever hits us really hard. I'm not 100% sure how well we can angle against this guy. Byron's got lower caliber guns than your average tier 5. Um, but, you know, British armor, it is what it is. Don't necessarily want to rely on that. You want to rely more on the ability to just not get shot in the first place. Pop the smoke. I was hoping to extend the cloud by backing up. You can see we hit the island, though, and that allows the the smoke to actually run out during its deployment. So we got very small, you know, amount of smoke, a very small cloud to be fiddling around with here. That's always going to be the case with the British cruisers. They have very quick smoke deployments, uh, not very expansive. You guys could consider putting uh, Hellsinger. From time to time, people ask me about putting him on as an inspiration. He's the Halloween commander, Japanese destroyer commander. Expands the size of the smoke clouds. Never actually tested him out as an inspiration. British cruisers would probably be the only line that I think it would be really uh, viable for, unless it just ends up being an amazing uh, inspiration. If any of you guys have tested it out and you got results, let me know what you think. It's always kind of been in the back of my mind, but don't really have uh, the hard data to back it up. Anyway, we're able to team up with our team there, work on that Byron. We got another Byron over here. Again, these are kind of, let me put it this way. Like, if you go, if you look at your enemy's ship's roster and go up and down it, you can say, okay, I'm going to do well against this ship, not so well against this ship. Byron, you know, just due to the nice armor schemes you can see there, we're getting a lot of shatters on this. So, not necessarily a ship I want to deal with. Now, look at the map. I mean, that's the only option. The other thing I was considering at the time was maybe going over to B, but we kind of want to push the advantage here. When we have numerical advantage like this, we want to go ahead, take the Byron out as quickly as possible. So we're going to do a little bit of open water here, kind of dodge and weave a little bit. You can see we dodged the first salvo, and we're going to get as many torps down as possible. Watch how quick I make this turn, and we're going to actually outturn our turret traverse here. Do not slow down in this situation. It would be very tempting. And yes, I'm slamming on the trigger there. Come on, shoot, shoot, shoot. But it is so tempting to stop, even for a millisecond, just to let those guns catch up and fire. If that thing gets a salvo off and we're sitting there broadside like that, broadside like that game over. So it's something I talk about a lot. It's not something I do 100% of the time, but it's something to aspire to do. Always defend yourself first and deal damage while you're doing that. And that means angling away from that guy. And that turn, I basically made it as quickly as possible. Swung around. He didn't get a shot off at us. I don't know what was going on exactly there. A little slow on the uptake there. But, again, had we paused halfway through that turn and he shot us during that pause, game over for sure. At least for our ship. So, there's the high caliber. You know, we're going to kill the ship and that'll be the end of the game. Pretty exciting Exeter game there. We got, what, Three and a half times our ship's HP, I think. So, pretty effective game there. Strong ship. I like it a lot. Uh, 
Hopefully you guys enjoyed that one. If you did, please hit the thumbs up. New to the channel, consider subscribing. Lots of World of Warships coming all the time. Questions, comments, leave below. Love to hear from you guys. And we'll see y'all later. Peace.